uh, Sam, I was interested in um, your observations from the Stanford men's practice prior to the NC2A final. And you had shared with me something you observed that you were very impressed with. Can you can you explain what that was? Yeah, it was interesting. You know, I'm I'm always trying to learn more about the game, and so I went to the practice. It was an open practice for coaches, and came with my pad and my pencil, and was ready to learn some drills and excited to watch the practice. And as we started watching, we noticed I was sitting with some other coaches. The starters weren't really involved. Um, and you know, it's like when you follow any professional sport, you want to see Michael Jordan play, and you want to see right. this guy play. And, it's like, huh, they're not, they weren't playing. And I had the opportunity to talk to another coach who worked closely with Stanford, so he kind of knew some of the ins and outs. And, and he said, this was, this was paying homage to the, the non-starters. And it was a scrimmage of non-starters, uh, and, the start, and the starters were calling the lines, uh, being the referee, shagging the balls, wiping the floor. And it was amazing. And I think, and I've seen on the teams I've worked with, it, it's very difficult to cultivate a sense of respect from the starters to the non-starters. As much as you talk about it and you preach it and you ask for it, unless there's ways for the starters to, to, to give back, the non-starters often it's a very thankless task. Um, and he was, he was uh, this coach friend of mine who, who has worked with some of the Sanford players and knows the coaches pretty well, referenced the practice a few weeks ago where the number one setter, I mean the, the stud, the guy that runs the show, uh, Kavika Soji, was off to the side sort of you know, holding a ball up, wiping a ball down. And someone took a dive, and it was a big wide spot on the floor. And he sprinted over, got on his knees, wiped up the, and ran off. So that and he the, was really into it. Oh, he was fine. He and he, was, but it was it was a selfless act to let the B side keep practicing at a high level of efficiency. And it was an, it was a selfless, egoless act to say, I'm I'm not above you. I'm, no job is above me. Um, and that you could feel that energy in the gym, and you can feel it the next night when the when the non-starters are on the side supporting the starters, saying. We're, we're our really team. Our team. And when they all won, oh, and they, great. you really felt that they yeah. were all very, they were part of that team. And I think that that's that's start. something that you know PCA talks about. You have, as a coach have to cultivate that environment. You may not get kids that come in with, oh, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to thank my mom for cooking me breakfast every day. Like, as a coach, you need to encourage that, develop it, uh, and once it goes, I was talking to some of the Stanford coaches. They kind of say, yeah, now we can kind of sit back and it's a cool thing. But it didn't just happen by itself. You know, it took some planning. Well, thank you, Sam, for your insights, and um, good luck. Thank you your very season much. Going forward. Thank you.